Yeah. So then I just do that. I want to come up when he's done, I'll push it. And then push it. Good evening. My name is Adam Alpisco, other known as Cadet Senior Airman Alpisco. Before I give, begin my speech, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to all of these cadets. I have to say, it is not hard to use your passive listening, but for a lot of cadets, like me, it's hard to share what they have to offer from their hearts to their peers. I'm, I'm going to share how my actions derailed my life and what choices I have made to change the course of my future. Like every cadet, we came to this academy for our own reason. Either we had a school problem, a family problem, a drug problem, or like some of us, just wanted to come to say, I did that. I want to start off my speech by sharing a little bit about my past. I guess you could say I lived an average middle child's life. I had two older siblings that were always stressing out my mother from bad choices, and two younger siblings that were always needing attention. I lived with a mother who had no patience with an alcoholic father that is now a blur in my memory. I'm not going to sugarcoat myself, but as I, as I got, I'm not going to sugarcoat myself, but I was the one always doing the right thing, but never being noticed. As I got older, I thought my actions would help me get noticed. As a result, I got noticed in the ways I did not intend to. I'm not trying to make this sound like my war story, but as bad as this might sound, I already had a tolerance for alcohol. I remember my first cigarette was when I was six years old. And I knew it was bad knowing what marijuana smelled like, but I would have never thought I would be abusing it like I did. There wasn't a day I didn't go to school smelling like smoke, liquor, marijuana. It felt like a chain reaction when I started skipping classes, failing my classes, having a poor attitude, and like most of the cadets here, hanging out with the wrong people. I can remember being pissed off over something really stupid, immature you might say, and going to get high to go get in a better mood. Or if I was stressing out over something, I'd go get intoxicated with alcohol. As a result, I knew then and now that those were some very dysfunctional decisions. I can tell you right now, as I'm standing in front of you today, when we walk off that stage, we will not be perfect. We will still face challenges and most likely make dysfunctional decisions that will, make a, that will affect us, but we have to step back and remember what the Academy has taught us. And that is to know that in a situation where you make bad decisions, it's considered a learning experience. We have been given a second chance. We have been given tools, so let's apply them to our everyday life. My old wrestling coach gave me some wisdom that I want to share with all the cadets. So with your permission, I want all of you to try and stand up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get ahead of yourself. Listen to the word I just emphasized. Try standing up. So, no, you might seem confused, but what I was trying to say is, well, mainly I said not to stand up. So you might seem confused, but I never said stand up. I said try. So what I'm trying to get, get at is that in the real world, you either do or you don't. And for me, I chose to do this academy. As much as I thought this was a recovery place for juveniles, I still remember coming straight out of Juvenile Correctional Center. And the first thing I did was come to the orientation for this academy in Caldwell. As much as I didn't want to come, I knew I needed it. If I wanted to get through this, I had to have a reason. As we call it here, motivation. And that motivation was my little brother and sister. My older siblings were never a positive influence for me. They all had a chance to be that bigger brother, but they never took it. So as I attended, I realized that I had the opportunity to make up for what my older brothers missed out on. And that was helping them through the bad days. This academy has offered me so much. They have offered me physical fitness, academic excellence, responsible citizenship, discipline, and to enjoy the little things. But what I enjoyed having the most was my squad, my friends, my 
band of brothers. 81 other brothers and sisters, what else could I ask for? To conclude this speech, I want to leave you all with this. There are things we did that I'll never forget. Choices and decisions that I'll never regret. Because other than making progress in my decisions and making, making me ready for my future, I have made memories. I am glad to represent my home away from home. And for my fellow brothers and sisters, you will all and forever be in my heart. 1-15. We conquered the challenge. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce from the Scouts Flight, Cadet Senior Airman, Airman no, Cadet, yeah, Cadet Senior Airman Silvez. Ears. Okay. It's good. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello, sirs and ma'ams. My name is Silvas, or as many of you know, Cadet Senior Emmett Silvas. Well, first off, congratulations, Class 2015. We've made it. We've made our friends, family and parents proud. We all went from candidates sitting on a hardwood floor in the gym at IDYCA with itchy necks from our recently cut hair, which I'm pretty sure our haircuts came out perfect, right? To men and women ready to take on the world dauntlessly. Even though we gave up our elongies back at home, them J's though, <laughs> and trying to hide the fact that we're, scared, that we're scared of change, so we let fear lead the way for a while. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. If your plain small does not serve the world, there's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not fear and circle around you. We're all meant to shine, and our presence automatically liberates others. I remember getting told when to get on my face and having to rely on your battle buddy for your own personal success. I wasn't used to getting told when to sit down or eat, plus live in a bay pack full of brothers where every, stu every step you take is a battle full of hateful words from a band of brothers, a spirited core. And that's what kept me here at the Scouts, brotherhood, the family I never had. For me, I came from a shell of a kid that I once knew was always skipping classes, coming to school high, and not to mention falling asleep in those classes, because I had no care for my future. I never even knew where to go in life. I felt like I was handing down a roll of failures, and my own fears and setbacks slowly bringing me down. I felt like a prisoner of my own life. All the choices that I made five and a half months ago have changed my view on so many things. I can still hear my dad's words in the back of my mind saying, like a remedy saying, son, I'm proud of you. I knew you could do it. And for me, I never used to be this way. I would always take him for granted and take in his, our last name and hide him behind it like a cloak, plus telling him I had good grades. And when he got my report card in the mail of all my fellow classes, my words soon meant nothing to him. Every word I spit or told him, he wouldn't believe me, but he never gave up on helping me. Because no matter how long you travel in the wrong direction, you can always turn around. Thanks to him, I'm here on this stage congratulating everyone else, telling my success and failures at IDYCA. I remember first coming to, I, I remember first coming to Pierce, Idaho, with that, what, what, and what state of mind brought me to the academy. There's a quote that I used to motivate me to change my life around. If I quit now, I'll be back to where I started. And when I started, I was destiny wishing I was where I am now. Every day at this academy that I'm here, I always reminisce of one thought. Who was I? And did I really change? Change is what every cadet wanted to do the first day they set foot on campus. Whether it be for failing classes, high school dropouts, and so on. When I was the old me back at home, I really wanted to change and turn my fast life around because this fast life soon shatters because after all the lights and screams, nothing but dreams matter. Tupac. There were times where I felt like everything I said or told anybody were words bouncing off a wall. I desperately wanted to be someone else, mainly because of how much I messed up my old life. I've been in trouble with the law once or twice, but five and a half months ago, getting in trouble, sneaking out, staying out until 5, 5 a.m., joyriding, just being a rebel meant nothing. Who cares who it affects? It's not going to affect the people around me, right? Nah, to the truth, my eight-year-old brother soon began copying everything I did saying, I want to be like you, Silvas. Then when my parents had to lie to him, say I was spending the night at my friend's house, but really was locked behind a steel door, really hurt me inside. <clears throat> he said to me, he said, your little brother looks up to you the most out of all your brothers. And he told me that one day you were gone. Silvas is at home, but he showed me all his ways and I could be Silvas for you, Dad. These powerful words made me realize I did not want my little brother growing up to be the jacked up kid I was five and a half months ago. 
I want him to grow up and remember me as an inspiration and motivation to pursue the pursuit of happiness. So I decided to come to IDYCA. And yep, it was sugar-coated, for me at least. The sign read, we believe in second chances. The first time I looked at that sign, I can remember telling myself, that place looks so dumb, who climbs rock walls for fun? So interested, I read more, and five and a half months away from family and friends, and no freedom to do or go where you want. That part stuck to me, and it wasn't mentioned in the flyers and posters. So when my dad told me that's where I'm going to get straightened up, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. All the paperwork to fill out was stacks and stacks high, then going to the store and buying all supplies needed for your personal hygiene, but most important and the most scariest, the part that hits home, is when you reach, first reach the road up towards IDYCA and you get inside the building where you see anxious cadets in black and whites carrying duffel bags just like me and sergeants in uniforms marching around eager to smash freshly and can fresh and new candidates. I remember thinking, what did I get myself into? This is so real, no lie. It was real when I had got yelled at for putting my hand in my pocket while I was nervously waiting in line. Canada, get your hand out of your pocket now. I looked at him with anger, but anxiety soon overcame me that feeling. I knew from that point on I was about to live in a whole new world where my opinion meant nothing, and most importantly, respect is earned, not given. Scouts had to learn this the hard way, but that's what distinguishes us from the other flights. There's a quote I believe goes with my point. I don't stop when I'm tired, I stop when I'm done. We had this mindset all through acclimation, which now led us here. I've read some of my journals and wrote during acclimation about blaming others for my mistakes. Now I'm always reflecting. Have I changed since then? It's weird how being a bay pack full of brothers brings you so close to one another. Then when Texas and Turk I took us on a hike slash run in the rain and asked all of us, what was your most memorable moment at IDYCA? Well, I didn't answer because I didn't have one. Now I can answer them with no doubt, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys can too. With that, I want to thank you, Tech Sergeant Turka. You've been a motivation ever since acclamation. You never gave up on us, even though you were knew you were set up for failure. But you came in and applied pressure. Like Master Sergeant Edwards' famous quote, time or pressure will create a diamond in the end. And we're all shining like the richest and clearest diamond. All thanks goes to the teachers and cadre. You gave me direction to go in life and allowed me to, to look at the bigger picture. Also, you changed my life, for that I am grateful. And I always give 110%, as a deputy would say. Before I end my speech, I want to leave you with one last thing to remember. Fear is only something that's holding you back from what you want, from what dream you want to pursue in life, and that's your choice to give into it. So it's with you. Thanks for listening. It's my honor to introduce Cadet Senior Emma Shelton from the Axe Flight.